Howdy. A question came in from somebody recently asking, what is your opinion of a home warranty? Now, as a landlord, I have eight properties, 16 units, been self-managing, 18 units because of my new duplex, self-managing now for over a decade. Matt, you have a constantly changing, shifting target number of units. We'll call it about, we'll call it 140-ish. 140. How many properties? 52 buildings. 52, yeah. been investing for 23 years now. Yes, sir. Yep. Cool. Yes. Uh, about the age of my next ex-wife. <laughs> and what is your opinion with those decades of experience of what you think of home warranties? Oh my word, I hate them. They're awful. You know, so- they're towards the top top three things of things I hate the most for, for landlords. Um, one of them is home warranties. Another one of them is landlord insurance. Hey, if your tenant stops paying, you can just pay us and over time, and we just take a percentage of the rent. And then if your tenant stops paying, we actually will insure that. It's like, how bad of a landlord are you? And so I think very often home warranty stuff is exactly the same way. I think that when you're a good landlord, you stay up on the five things that kill you in being a landlord, which is, you know, you're looking at the plumbing, you're looking at the heating, you know, you're looking at the, uh, in, in the Northeast, you're looking at the windows, um, you're looking at the foundation, making sure that's good. And you're looking how your property kind of manages water as far as like gutters and things like that. So I think so often people make the mistake of buying something like that and then thinking, oh yeah, I'll be good. As soon as you file a claim, the race is on for them to disprove why they should cover you. And they win a lot more often than you think. It's not like in the TV commercial, hi, this just happened. We'll send someone right over. No. Number one, most of them don't actually have employees of their own. Most of them don't. Most of them have contracts with local contractors that they then send to your home. And it's kind of like AAA works where they get a reduced rate because they're supposed to send them so much business. I got bad news for you. Those guys are still on the clock and they still like working by the hour. So they want to make sure they're getting that thing done as quickly as possible, right or wrong. They want to just get it done as quickly as possible. And then the warranty will say something like, well, and if there is an issue within this amount of time, we'll, we'll send them back free of charge. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm sure that's the case. And I'm sure that nothing or very rarely does anything happen in that grace period where they get sent back. It's usually a week after that. And then it's, oh, well, you know, that, that one's kind of on you. That one's kind of, you know, that's another going to be another hit on your policy. So I don't know. I hate them. I think it's a way for people to be the wrong kind of lazy, not the unlazy, but the wrong kind of lazy and not guarantee the level of service and certainly not be there in it to make sure that it never happens again um, because they're getting paid less largely to do that job. But that's just my opinion on the matter. Yours, Dion? It's very similar, right? So the people who are looking for both opinions, it was nice seeing you. <laughs> but there are several different types of people when it comes to home warranties, right? And there's the first type who acquire a home warranty, never have an issue, and slept well at night because they thought, if I ever had an issue, I have somebody to call. I totally get it. Sure. I have somebody to call too. Before I bought a property, I made a list of plumbers that have 24-hour, seven-day emergency uh, service. I made a list of electricians that had uh, seven day a week response, maybe not 24 hours, but they'll come out on the weekend. I hired contractors and handymen from Thumbtack, use them for small things to build up a list of people I can call for when issues come up. So I've got this, do you know what a Rolodex is? <laughs> I have this list of people back in my day. I have this list of people that let me sleep well at night because when an issue pops up, I call them. And then I take the money that I have been setting aside from cash flow that I designed to do this when I ran the numbers on buying the property initially to have the tenants have a reserve sitting here that the tenants pay for those issues. That's my warranty. Instead of paying money to a company, because that's the first people, they buy the warranty, never use it, slept well at night. Then, the, then you have the second people, and these are the most vocal. Whenever we talk yes. about home warranties, mm -hmm. I see you in the comments. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> I have a home warranty. I've had it for 13 years and I used it and they resolved my issue in like two days. It was great. Okay. So you paid for the home warranty for 13 years to resolve a $2,000 issue. How many thousands of dollars did you lose to have that warranty? Only 11. The, the, the least numeral and most vocal of the group of people. And then you have the third most common who acquire home warranties. I got a home warranty and I had an issue and their legal team that they have 
working there specifically, like Matt said, to deny your claim, to find a reason to use the, the not even small text, the text of this is the age of the water heater that we'll, we'll do. This is the type of uh, any anything with your trees above this height that's not our problem because we don't come mow your lawn. Why would we come mow your trees? Like they've got verbiage in there to not take care of almost anything that happens with your home warranty. The mm -hmm. most vocal, smallest numeral people that say we had an issue and it was resolved make it seem like, because that's that law of small numbers, right? Mm -hmm. That that happens more often. But the biggest number of people are the ones who had it denied. And then you have people like me that will never have a home warranty, that can't stand the idea of, I have to fight this company to get something done on my property when I'm already going to have to fight the city. That's yep. enough fighting. Yep. So I, I appreciate they the do question. They don't pull the permit. And they fight you when you pull the permit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about a couple of cities that, that uh, now I've got two now that I kind of don't want to own any more rentals in. So really? I, I don't like to name anybody by name, but Lake Hood, Washington, which is not how you say it, it's Lake Wood, Washington. Uh, Sorry, Curtis. I know you just got your triplex there. It's not where I want to own any more properties. And uh, I fought Port Orchard a bit. I had a ten month, I had a ten month experience for a three month burr. Yeah, I mean, that can, approved permits. That that can they were denied. The, so I so as you're talking, I'm coming up with like the fastest way to lose money on a property. You basically you get a property manager, you have a home warranty, and then you have landlord insurance. That's how you make sure that there's no money left for you. And to be very clear, landlord insurance isn't insurance on the building. Landlord insurance is specifically landlord insurance for you being a bad landlord or being lazy. Here's what I can tell you. Dion's course, my course, whatever. That's going to make you a better landlord that will cost you a fraction the price and have a far greater reach and return than any other option you're going to have. But that's the fastest way to lose money. Literally, you could have a PM with a warranty and a landlord insurance, and that's going to lose literally every single month. You will be paying money to own your beautiful rental property. And I'll wrap it up with my 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 fourth thing that you can add there to lose money quickly and right. stop you in your tracks when you start investing. And I'm going to turn the video off right after I say it because I'll talk for another 20 minutes on that is you can run out and put every property in an LLC to protect your assets. Oh, sweet Lord. 